Hey everyone and welcome to another video. I am Simply G and today I'm going to be doing a collection overview video with all of the stuff that you see behind me as well as some stuff that's over there. Uh, this includes anime, manga, art books, everything that I have in this room. So I hope you guys enjoy and I'll just get straight into it. B, did you come in here to help me film? You just came in here to sleep in the beanbag? Yes, I'm going to do a big room tour. You want, you want help? On the top of this very first shelf, I have the hardcover box set of Nosca of the Valley of the Wind, the entire series in two omnibus sets put out by Viz Media. Next to that, I have the entire 10 volume last gasp release of Barefoot Gen, which is a autobiographical manga about the Hiroshima bombings. And next to that, I have three of the main characters from Free in sailor outfits as childhood versions of themselves. You guys have seen them before. They've been floating around this room for a long time. They are prize figures for so very, very cheap for what they are. And yeah, so that's the top of my first shelf. Many of you who've watched my videos for a long time or have seen my collection before know that I like to keep completed series together so I don't have to worry about how much space certain books will take up on the shelf. So with this first bookcase and with this first shelf, you see that we have the entirety of Devil Man as well as the single Cutie Honey Omnibus, the entirety of After School Charisma 1 to 12, Monster 1 to 9, and Arca 13 1 to 6, all which are completed in English and all which fit on this first shelf very, very well. Next on this shelf we have some more completed series 1 to 17 of Lovecom or Lovely Complex, 1 to 7 of A Silent Voice, 1 to 10 of Mushishi, the last three volumes collected in a single omnibus, and 1 to 10 of After School Nightmare. Again, all completed series and they all fit on this shelf very neatly. I also have a couple more prize figures, sort of more like Gachapon figures for Full Metal Alchemist with Scar, May. Alphonse and Winry, as you can see right in front of Lovely Complex. On this shelf we have some more completed series with 1 to 13 of Moonchild and Out of Print Shoujo, that is a sci-fi love story. Next to that is 1 to 8 of the Cross Game Omnibuses, which is a baseball manga by Mitsuru Arachi, and the only one of his manga we have in English currently. Next to that is Everyone's Getting Married, a 9 volume Jose about marriage obviously and relationships and next to that one is number six which is another sci-fi series with volumes one to nine on this shelf we have a bunch of my ongoing larger trim books with one to six of golden kamui i'm not up to date with that one i know i am reading it via viz's website though so i am up to date in regards to what has been put out, just I haven't been buying the books on a frequent basis. Next to that is one to three of the omnibuses of Watercoy, Love is Hard for Otaku, and one to four of Dead Dead Demons, Da 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 Destruction, as well as Ran in the Grey World, one to three. Beside those series, we have a bunch of volume ones for a lot of series that have just started or I am hoping to pick up in the future, being Inside Mari, Witch Hat Atelier, Eminon, O oh Maidens in Your Savage Season, Blank Canvas, My So-Called Artist's Journey, and Complex Age. All series that I really enjoy and do hope to continue, just haven't gotten to the second volume, so the second volume hasn't been released yet. Next to that I do also have my 1 8th scale of Sail Phantom Hive from Black Butler, as well as the old DVD set from Funimation, and just a photograph picture thing there, as a little bit of display for this shelf. On this shelf we have two ongoing series by Fumi Yoshinaga, one of my absolute favourite mangaka of all time. We have 1 to 15 of Oku, The Inner Chambers, and then 1 to 13 of What Did You Eat Yesterday. Two incredibly different series, but both absolutely wonderful. I also have the recent figure release of Kino from Kino's Journey from Kotobukiya, I believe, as well as the first Japanese limited edition of the Hyoka Blu-rays, which I purchased for just display reasons like this. So I really, really like this shelf. I like everything that's on it. And yeah, definitely some of my favorite books are on this shelf here. 
On this shelf, we have some more completed series with volumes 1 to 23 of Hikaru no Go, a series about Go, obviously, the board game. Next to that is the three volume series Genkaku Picasso by Usamaru Furia, which is, in my opinion, the best of his works, or at least the most approachable of his works. And next to that is Ottoman volumes 1 to 18, a shoujo series which has aged a little bit, but is still pretty fun if you can forgive it its age. In front of Ottoman I also have three Nendoro Patis from um, Kwase in a Foreign Labyrinth, including the three mainish characters from that series. On this shelf and the next one I do have some double stacking. I tend to avoid it in the collection overall, but I am hoping to get a new bookcase fairly soon, so that's where these books are hoping to go in the future next time I do one of these videos. But in the front you can see I have My Hair Academia volumes 1 to 19, which is all that's currently released. Once volume 20 comes out I think I'm going to stop buying the series, especially on release date. It's not a super duper high priority priority for me right now. So yes, 1 to 19 of My Hair Academia. Behind that, as you can see, is Yu Hakusho volume 1 to 19, the complete series by Togashi. And next to that is 1 to 8 of ES or Eternal Sabbath, as well as 1 to 15 plus Horse with No Name um, of Mars. And both of those series are by Fuyumi Soryo. Two, again, very different series from the same mangaka. One is a sci-fi thriller, the other one is a dramatic high school romance. And again, we have some double stacking. In the front we have Kakaishi volumes 1 to 26. This is one of the older series that I am hoping to complete this year. It has 35 volumes in all. And behind that is the long-running shoujo series Skip Beat with 1 to 42. Really, really fun, really wonderful. If you like comedic stories, if you like girl power, if you like some really likable characters, as well as insight into sort of the talent industry in Japan, check that one out. It's very, very, very good. Up the very top of the next super skinny <laughs> bookcase, I have my Nyanko Sensei plush. This is given to me by a dear friend. I love him. He sits on the top there and just watches over me as I read and hang out in this room. So yes, wonderful, wonderful character from a wonderful series, Natsume's Book of Friends, one of my all-time favorites. Under Nyanko Sensei, we have a bunch of DMPs Fumi Yoshinaga releases 1 to 4 of Flower of Life, which is the entire series. I absolutely love this series. It does have problematic elements, but because of how Yoshinaga writes it and handles it and addresses it, I don't have problems with it. I think it's done very, very well. Next to that is 1 to 4 of Antique Bakery, probably the most well known of her works thanks to the anime adaptation. And then next to that is Garden Dreams, which is a single volume series and very, very good. If you can hunt it down, give it a, give it a read. Next on this shelf, we have a bunch of limited edition releases of various films. From the UK is Lou Over the Wall, A Silent Voice, the movie, and In This Corner of the World. In This Corner of the World and A Silent Voice, I believe you can watch on Netflix. We also have the Anaplex release of Dokusei, our classmates, one that I adore and the first volume of the manga just came out in English. We also, next to that, have Anthem or Melody of the Heart, one of my favorite of Mari Okara's works. It's a little less melodramatic compared to a lot of her other stuff. And next to that is the Time of Eve film as well as the OVA versions of that same little series which I really enjoy. It's a near future sci-fi questioning sort of the validity and the humanity of AI and robots. Next underneath that is some more display. We have one of our copies of Level E which is a anime adaptation of the same name from Togashi's manga. We have never gotten that series in English, the manga. And in front of that is the Nendoroid of the main character, Prince Baka, who is actually my sister's Nendoroid. I believe this is also her Blu-ray set, so he's in here just as, again, just some more display for this room. 
Next on the shelf we have a whole bunch of one shots or very short series that I feel have a similar tone or atmosphere. A lot of them are from a female perspective or are written for women and that I really enjoy. First up we have both All My Darling Daughters and Not Love But Delicious Foods Make Me So Happy by Fumi Yoshinaga. Next to that is My Lesbian Experience with Loneliness as well as Volumes 1 and 2 of My Solo Exchange Diary, a memoir by Kabi about her struggle with acceptance and her mental health. Next to that is Ryoko Ikeda's single volume of Claudine, a story about a transgender man in historical France. And next to that is another transgender manga, this one more autobiographical about the mangaka's transition in medically and legally to a woman, the struggles she had as well as her marriage to her husband. Next to that is Town of Evening Calm, Country of Cherry Blossoms, which is a collected little book of one shots by the same mangaka of In This Corner of the World. And then we have both Pink and Helter Skelter by Kyoko Okazaki. And next to that finally is Miyoko Ano's In Clothes Called Fat. All very good works but very challenging if you want some Jose with a bit of bite and is sort of a struggle to read because it is so real to a lot of women's experiences. Those three are definitely worth reading. On this shelf we have a bunch more of limited edition releases of various films. We have the first three Evangelion Rebuild films. Um, next to that is the two UK releases of Tiger and Bunny, The Beginning, as well as The Rising. Akira, the limited 25th anniversary special edition. Doesn't come with anything super duper fancy like all of the current releases have been getting, but I don't need anything super duper fancy. As well as the three Berserk films, Barefoot Again, uh, film one and two, and then also Mary and the Witch's Flower. Here we have some more single volumes or short series, many of which are written by Natsume Ono. So La Quinta Camera, Danza, Tesoro, Ristorante Paradiso, and Gente are all written by her, as well as the two anthology books Neo Parasite M and Neo Parasite F, both of which are set within the Parasite universe and world. Next are some more prize figures with Akiho and Frau from Robotics Notes. Again, just not super duper expensive for what they are, but they're pretty likable characters from this show. And again, if you've watched my videos before, you've seen these two around before. They've been mainstays within the collection ever since the beginning. Down here we have some DVD sized film releases, mainly just plain DVD releases. The first one with Tabumachi Late Show or Awaiting My Journey. This is a Japanese release with English subtitles and very sweet couple minutes long each episode and so it's not a huge commitment but it was really really sweet. I believe it's still on Crunchyroll. Brave Story which I believe only got a disc release in Australia and the UK. It has a dub and everything so I don't know why this film never made it to the US. Um, it's not the perfect film but there are some beautiful parts to it. Millennium Actress is the only one of Satoshi Kon's films I still have on DVD, although with the new announcement that it is getting a Blu-ray release and a new dub, um, of which the Australian and UK had the older dub, again, the US never had the dub, I don't know why. It's not particularly good, they are redubbing it and I'm super duper happy because this personally is my favourite of Kon's films. Next to that is Interstellar 5555, the story of the secret star system. A um, interesting mix of Leiji Matsumoto and Daft Punk. It's sort of an extended music video. Next to that is Toward the Terra, the film version of the manga of a similar name uh, to Terra. Next to that is the film version of Clanad which I have not yet watched and neither have I watched the OVA release of Please Save My Earth but it is high up on the priority list. Next to that is Spring and Chaos which is one of the few Tokyo Pop DVD releases I own and next to that is the Kickstarter Blu-ray release of Mind Game. So yes, a whole again, a whole bunch of different things there but they are the same size and because I have so few DVD sized releases for films I do keep them all in one spot. 
up here on the top of my next large shelf, I have a lot of Fullmetal Alchemist stuff. Obviously, the Gate from the UK Ultimate Edition Blu-ray release. I have one to five of the Full Metal editions of the manga, as well as the four panel comics. And I have Alphonse, Edward, Roy, and Risa, all in these small chibified versions. They are not the Nendoroids. They were predate the Nendoroids by a long time. They were actually released with the Sacred Star of Milos film. Again, just prize figures, not super duper expensive, but I really like them. Next to that is my original, sort of slightly battered up copy of the Nabari no oh, art book, one that I really, really love and really love Kamatani's work. I also have my framed little art of Natsume's Book of Friends. It's technically a notebook, but I just like having it in the frame because I think it looks good. On this shelf starts a lot of my Blu-ray anime collection with the Japanese release of Durara, the first season, as well as the box for season two, but that actually contains all of the Anaplex releases of season two. And then I have the Japanese release of Arca 13, all of which are subtitled and Durara, both parts have the dub to it as well. I have the UK release of Escaflone as well as Gurren Lagann. Both of those have the show as well as the film included. Next to that is the US release of Erica 7 and Erica 7 AO or OW. I have the Kickstarter release of Skip Beat. Then there's Death Note on Blu-ray, the Space Dandy first limited box which actually has both parts in there, both seasons. I, from my memory, I bought the Garden of Sinners limited box or less limited, I guess, Blu-ray box from Japan, although Anaplex did release the same thing in the US many years later. But I do have the Anaplex release of Recalled Out Summer, the OVA. Next to that is Space Brothers. That box is one that I made myself, but it contains all eight parts from Sentai Filmworks. Next to that is another UK release with Snow White and the Red Hair, which contains both two seasons. And then another my copy of Level E, which is the Funimation release of that show. On this shelf, we have more Blu-rays, one from Japan for the Blu-ray set of Razaphon, a series we have not yet gotten in Blu-ray in the West. So pick that up. That's one of my favorite mecha series. I kind of almost like it a little bit more than Neon Genesis Evangelion. Uh, but it is sort of the underdog when you compare those two things. Then I have the original Full Metal Alchemist, the entire series as well as the film. And then I have the later rebooted version, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. So all of Full Metal and Blu-ray there. Next to that is another box I made myself, but that's for Moribito, a series I absolutely adore and has been re-released by Viz that contains the anime works releases. Then I have the UK release of Hyoka as well as Ping Pong, both really, really fantastic series and I really love the Hyoka set. It's beautiful. Uh, next to that is the Australian releases of the Puella Magi Madoka Magica series as well as the three films. And then I also have the Australian release of Mawaru Penguin Drum on Blu-ray. Technically, I believe the Siren Visual release, i.e. this release, has the best picture quality for this show out of all of the releases, even more so than the Japanese one, so I don't know how we lucked out there. <laughs> Next to that is another box that I made myself, which contains parts one to three of the Twelve Kingdoms. My favorite isekai, adore it, love it. Uh, really not a fan of that genre in general, but that one is my absolute favorite, the best and is getting re-released by Discotech on Blu-ray very soon. So if you missed out on the anime works set years ago, then check it out. It is coming out soon. Next to that is the UK releases of Wolf Strain, Oron High School Host Club, Gun and Gankutsuo, The Count of Monte Cristo. I have the US release of Princess Jellyfish, the Australian release of From the New World, and then a bunch of Funimation titles with Shiki, Terran Resonance, and Noragami Season 1 and Season 2. On this shelf, we have the last of my Blu-ray box sets. The first one being Little Busters, that's one I made myself, which contains both seasons and the OVAs. 91 Days and Bacchano are both set in Prohibition era US, one with a supernatural twist, the other one much more grounded. But the Bacchano release is the UK release, very wonderful. 
the 91 Days release is Funimation. Another Funimation release with Mob Psycho 100, that's the first season, I'm hoping that season 2 will fit into that box nicely as well. And then more UK releases with the Tatami Galaxy and Nighter's short Walk On Girl, both of which are set in the same version of Kyoto, the novels are written by the same person, so yes, really really love those two. And finally in the US you can actually watch this very soon because Funimation is finally putting it out on disc! Yay for you guys! Um, Land of the Lustrous is next to that, and then I have three shows by the same director, Lupin the Third, The Woman Named Fujiko Mine, Michiko and Hotshin, and then Yuri on Ice. One, I absolutely love this director, her work. Siri and Ice is definitely my favorite out of the bunch, but all three have really great qualities to them and I really enjoy them. Next to that is my free collection. We have the first season with Iwatomi Swim Club, we have the second season with Eternal Summer, and then we have the movie collection which is both the wrap-up films and the sequel films slash prequel films, and then Season 3 is coming out very very soon, so that will just have to go somewhere in that spot. Next to that is actually the Japanese Blu-ray set of Chai Furu. This one's just here for display, it fits pretty perfectly right in this spot and fills up the gap. Next to that is Classic Sailor Moon, uh, seasons 1, 2, 3, and 4. Still need to get season 5, hasn't been released here yet. And then the reboot Sailor Moon Crystals set 1, 2, and 3. Another display shelf here with just various bits and bobs. It's a little unfinished because I'm waiting for something very exciting, so hopefully you will see that in another pickups video soon. But we have my original beat up box of season four of Natsume's Book of Friends, uh, just an illustrative piece there. My medicine seller figure I absolutely love, he's a 1 7 scale. My two volumes of Kitaro manga, I still need to pick up the rest. My Japanese release of Mushishi and then just some more bits and bobs there. I like the aesthetic feel of this particular shelf, but as I said, it's a little bit not complete right now because I am ex waiting for something very exciting. This shelf is more of just standard Blu-ray sets in alphabetical order, so Angel Beats, Clan Ad, Season 1 and 2, Daily Lives of High School Boys, Darker Than Black on Blu-ray, Devil is the Part-Timer, Devil Man, Ghost Hunt, High Q Seasons 1 and 2, Hozuki's Cool Headedness Season 1, Humanity Has Declined, Hunter Hunter 2011 Parts 1 to 3 plus the Phantom Rouge film, Yorman Gone Seasons 1 and 2, Kids on the Slope, Kyoso Giga, Library Wars and the Films, Bakumonogatari and Nisemonogatari, My Hair Academia Seasons 1 and 2, Mysterious Girlfriend X, Number 6, The Pet Girl of Sakuraso, Psychic Detective Yakumo, Robotics Notes, Samurai Champloo, Soul Eater, Star Driver, Steins Gate and the Film, Sunday Without God, Taisho Baseball Girls, Tamako Market and Tamako Love Story, the film, Tanaka Kun is always listless, This Boy Can Fight Aliens, This Boy Caught a Merman, and then the second collection which is um, This Boy Suffers from Crystallization as well as This Boy is a Professional Wizard, Tonokon, Suratama, Ungo, Seasons 1 to 4 of Ushino Prince Sama, When They Cry, the complete series, The World God Only Knows, com the complete series. So that's all just standard releases, many of which are from Sentai Filmworks. There are some Funimation stuff in there, a lot of Australian releases and UK releases, as well as some discotech releases. The only thing missing right now is Flip Flappers, and that's because I'm actually watching it, so it's in the other room, I'm not going to go get it. But yeah. Lots of very different uh, types of shows, and these vary from region A and B, just depending on which country the set comes from. Here we have some more standard releases of Blu-rays, the last of the TV shows with The World is Still Beautiful, Zammed, Yamada's First Time, Hyorikuma Arashi, and then Yu Yu Show. We have some DVD sets and one Blu-ray set on its side here as well. These are things I still need to watch, uh, Blast of Tempest, Nana, Nana X, Toward the Terra, and then Record of Lotus War. And then next to that are just standard uh, film releases on Blu-ray, so 5 centimeters per second, Blood the Last Vampire, Blue Exorcist, The Boy and the Beast, Children Who Chase Lost Voices, Colorful, The Disappearance of Haruhi Suzumiya, Erica Seven the movie, Garden of Words, Girl Who Leapt Through Time, Ghost in the Shell and Innocence, Giovanni's Island, Haikara-san, Here Comes Miss Modern, 
The Life of Budori Gusuko, Metropolis, Night on the Galactic Railroad, Origin Spirits of the Past, Paprika, Psychic School Wars, Sailor Moon R, the movie, Summer Wars, Tech on King Creek, Tokyo Godfathers, Urasei Yatsura, Beautiful Dreamer, the second film, Wolf's Children, and then two copies, the Japanese copy and a UK copy of Your Name. Many of these films are done by the same director, whether that be Mokoto Shinkai or Mamoru Hosoda. We also have a lot of franchise films in there as well, as well as just some other stuff. Um, a lot of the times I find that I'm a little bit more forgiving on films because they don't have a huge time to work with and they're always very beautiful. I don't own every single anime film that's been released but I do enjoy all of these ones even the ones that are technically not very good like Origin Spirits of the Past or Psychic School Wars they are still beautiful or have an amazing soundtrack like Origin. This shelf we have two series both that are released in hardcover we have Vinland Saga volumes 1 to 10 the 2-in-1 omnibuses by Kodansha we have also the Yen Press release of A Bride Story by Kaoru Mori, volumes 1 to 10. I love this series and I cannot wait for volume 11. Can't wait for volume 11 of Vinland Saga either, but Mori, I just adore. You guys know that. Longtime fan of her work. In the middle, we also have this Eveland uh, tin, which was released with the Time of Eve Kickstarter. We also have this weird little Cars. Thing from Jojo that my sister's friend gave us the last time she was in Japan. So yeah, there's some obligatory Jojo for the collection. Last shelf for this bookcase we have the Akira box set, hardcover, unflipped, beautiful editions. Next to that are the three um, releases of Natsume's Book of Friends, season one to four on DVD and Blu-ray. Marvelous. I believe the first two seasons are DVD only, but I really wish someone would rescue Natsume and give us the last two seasons because, as you guys know, big fan, would love to own it all. Next to that is Rohan at the Louvre, so I guess more obligatory Jojo there. We have also the first volume of Dementia 21, the single volume of A Zoo in Winter by Jiro Tanaguchi, and then the complete 1 to 8 omnibuses of With the Light Raising an Autistic Child. Up the very top of this next shelf we have my Revolutionary Girl Utena Blu-ray box set from Nozomi Entertainment. Still haven't opened it, still haven't cracked into those Blu-rays, but it looks good up there. It's, it's a very big piece, so I don't really know if I'm going to be keeping it. I may just replace it with the UK edition once that comes out. I don't know. Who knows? But for now it sits up the top here. In this top part of this shelf we have a bunch of complete best um, or the best of CDs so that usually is this, the CDs of all of the different um, openings and endings and then it'll have a DVD or Blu-ray that has the actual animated parts of the openings and closings of various shows so we have one for the original Full Metal Alchemist as well as Full Metal Alchemist uh, Brotherhood. The, next to that is the Notomine Fan Best, which are the fan rated favorite from the Notomine block. Next to that is Space Brothers. Next to that is Not So Book of Friends. And next to that is Soul Eater. I really like these sorts of things. I don't have all of them that I would like to have, but many of these I bought in Japan and they're a good investment if you like, you know, music and the openings and that sort of thing. On this shelf we have various CD releases for the Hunter x Hunter 2011 uh, you know, anime. We have the opening and the various endings and we also have a bunch of soundtracks. Next to that is the soundtrack of Your Lie in April. Next to that is the complete best or the best of Sket Dance. And then also Durarara. Here we have a scale figure of Edward Elric and technically Alphonse Elric as well. I, you guys know, I'm a big Fumel Alchemist fan. There's, I'm not trying to hide it. And when I heard that the series was finally getting figures after so, so long, and this one was really one of the nicest. This is technically the limited edition release of this figure because the normal release doesn't have all of this extra Alphonse part of the base. Um, but yeah, I, I had to indulge myself. I couldn't not have a really nice Fulmalchemist scale figure. 
Here we have a whole bunch of Ghibli releases on Blu-ray. These are Australian releases. So Nosca, Lapta, Grave of the Fireflies, My Neighbor Totoro, Kiki's Delivery Service, Only Yesterday, Porco Rosso, Whisper of the Heart, Princess Mononoke, and My Neighbor's The Yamadas. They're all in uh, chronological order or the by the year that they came out. The only one that I'm missing is Pompoko from this uh, era of Ghibli. And I enjoy most, if not all, of Ghibli's films. They're fun, they're easy to watch, and just nice to relax to. So, yeah. Here we have another little shelf that stayed the same forever. We have the character songs for the first season of Free, um, with Haru, Makoto, Nagisa, Rei, and Rin. Then we also have Haru and Makoto little rubber straps here. This has stayed for the same forever. I'm a big fan of free and I don't really buy character songs, but Kyoto Animation knows how to market their stuff. They know how to merchandise and I'm a sucker. So yes, I've had this forever and this is a limited box release that you would get if you were in Japan and you bought the CDs from the same store. It was just like a bonus. Next, some more free music. This one is the duet singles, so two characters singing together. And then the Eternal Summers are just single character songs. Uh, more characters in Eternal Summer, so more discs, as you can see, more boxes. Uh, we also have the first two um, soundtracks plus the soundtrack for the high speed film. Um, yeah, again, not much to add aside from it's music, it's free, and Kyoto Animation likes to take my money. The rest of my Ghibli collection here with Spirited Away, Howl's Moving Castle, Tales from Earthsea, Ponyo, Arietti from Up on Poppy Hill, The Wind Rises, The Tale of the Princess Kaguya, and When Marnie Was There. The only one that I need from this collection, or this era of films, is The Cat Returns, which is not my favourite of the Ghibli films, so that's why it's taken just so long for me to pick it up. Here we have the six volumes of Erika Sakurazawa's work that Tokyo Pop put out at some point. We have Angel, Angel Nest, Between the Sheets, Nothing But Loving You, The Rules of Love, and The Aromatic Bitters. All Jose series, all older series obviously being Tokyo Pop. And although I have many gripes with Tokyo Pop, I have to commend them for trying to break into this market so early when it really wasn't viable in the West. So yeah, beautiful books and really happy to have them. More music here. We have openings and ending songs for various free seasons, uh, both season one and two, and then I think the high speed film. We have the Kurashichiji or Black Butler Complete Best. We have the opening song for Anohana. We have one of the soundtracks for the Mushishi anime, and then we have the three soundtracks for the original Full Metal Alchemist, and then the three soundtracks for the Brotherhood um, anime. So yes, lots of soundtracks here. Lastly for this shelf and lastly for the CDs we have like this weird little soundtrack thing um, which is Evangelion focused. Uh, next to that is the Shurikuma Cafe or Polar Bear Cafe music best and then we have the Higurashi or When They Cry um, complete best as well so again collecting the openings and endings for that show then we also have a tiny little Xiaomei who is again from Full Male Alchemist she is a miniature panda and very cute and very plush and very adorable up the top of this uh, cabinet we have the full Neon Genesis Evangelion manga series as well as both Shinji and Kaoru from the third rebuild film yep this is where my Evangelion stuff is, and uh, I enjoy the manga. It's a nice addition to this franchise. I like how each iteration of the story gives something new or different or a different perspective to such a beloved series after so long. The top of this cabinet is where, um, the whole cabinet is figures, but here I have my Toy Works Victor 1 8th. Hopeful to get Yuri at some point, although it's really hard to find him. And I don't want one without the other, and although Toy Works isn't the greatest quality, I personally don't have an issue with them. And I like that it's the skating outfit, because none of the other figures have the skating outfit. And each figure that I've seen, they've all had issues. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I'm personally not like really upset about how they look or anything. I don't micro-focus onto figures compared to some collectors, so 
that's just a me thing. I know a lot of people don't necessarily like this figure, but I also have Ashinaji from Banana Fish, and I really, really like this dual figure. If you haven't seen or read this series, it is a 80s action shoujo set in New York. The This new figure is thanks to the recent anime adaptation, which is an updated um, version where it's set in modern day rather than the 80s. Uh, but yeah, really good. Kind of heartbreaking and um, tragic. It's not a happy story by any means, but it's still one that I enjoy and I really like these characters and their dynamics. So yeah, Kotobukiya did a good job on their figure. Next is more of my shameless adoration for free. This is Makoto and Haru. They're middle school versions from the high speed film slash the light novels. Oh my goodness. I really really love this figure. It's so beautiful and it it's capturing one of my favorite scenes of the film. One of the most important scenes of the film. I also have little just prize figures of childhood Makoto and Haru. I am a sucker for childhood friends and Kyoto Animation knows it so they created free where everyone is a childhood friend with everyone. But this particular scale figure is just beautiful and from when the moment it was announced to the moment it got to my house I have just been in love with it. It's just so nice. Here we have a bunch of Nendoroids, all of the main team from Haikyuu, Karasuno. I don't have a lot of Nendoroids. I like them, but I don't pose them enough for them to be worthwhile for me. Um, but you can't really get a lot of the Karasuno characters as figures, so I love them all. And luckily for me, um, Good Smile or Orange Rouge, whichever you want to specify, has put out the entire team, plus many of the rival characters in this franchise via Nendoroid, and I'm very, very happy about that. Here we have a bunch of scale figures. I think they're all 1 8 scales. We have Kino from Kino's Journey, we have Utana from Revolutionary Girls Utana, and we have Maka from Soul Eater. All three are from different um, makers, like different production companies and a very different series as well that they come from but I like them they're all sort of in action poses so that's why these three are grouped together. Here we have the rest of my free figures um, the main cast we have Iwatobi with Makoto, Haru, Rei and Nagisa and then we have of course Rin and Sasuke from Samazuka. I don't tend to buy multiple figures of the same character but again you guys know I'm a big sucker for free and I'm a big sucker for Natsume and I'm a big sucker for Yuri and Ice so you will see multiple figures from those series uh, that I own <laughs> but generally I tend to keep it to one one figure per character uh, but these are all done by Altair so they're beautiful very well done although in regards to being in scale with each other I don't necessarily think they are because I feel like Sosuke is just a bit too big compared to like a lot of the other characters I mean if you compare his shoulder width to Makoto in the show they're not that different but here there's like a old big difference and Nagisa like I don't know they're just it's a little bit out of scale with each other but regardless they are all beautiful figures I'm not gonna complain and really high quality from this company as per usual. Here we have the Yu Yu Hakusho scale figures they're all from Kotobukiya the four main characters so we have Karama and then also like black Karama or a demon Karama we have Yusuke obviously our main character Hiei and Kuobara all really nice figures, all in scale with each other, of course. Um, there's been a lot of figures for Yu Yu Show recently, but generally they're only Kubara or Hie. Those two are definitely the po most popular of this franchise, but I like all of them, so I needed all of them. And this is the only line that has had all of the characters. Although there is a Genkai coming out from another line that would be pretty cool to own. I haven't ordered her, but I it would be nice to have her because she's a kick-ass old lady. Here on the very bottom we just have a mix of miscellaneous figures. We have a bunch of Haikyuu Nendoroids, we have Bokoto and Akashi, we have Kuro and Kenma, and then we have Oikawa and Iwazumi. Then we also have two of the Tolkien Rambu sword boys. I don't know anything about Tolkien Rambu, but I like the designs of these boys. 
I like them, so I bought them. And then we also have the two prize figures in the set that, like, we you saw Mako and Hara earlier. Here's Rin and Sosuke as their childhood versions. Again, I'm a fan. What can I say? And I like childhood friends. They hit me in the feels. So I, I have lots of iterations of various ages for the same characters. And then also we have a piece of illustrated um, portraiture, myself and my sister, from many years ago now. We had that done at a convention. This is, as I said, just like a miscellaneous shelf for whatever can fit in there. The top of this shelf we have Ava's Demon artwork, we also have a Nendo Petit of Kino from Kino's Journey, and 1 to 10 of the Umineko When They Cry manga. Those are my sister's manga, and so she doesn't buy manga very obviously, so we are very behind, as you can tell. Um, that's part arcs 1, 2, 3, I think the first 4 arcs. Um, volume three is missing because she's reading it, so it's one, two, two, one, two, one, two, three, and then one. Uh, yeah, we still need to buy a lot of Umineko, but she's a slow reader and she doesn't buy manga very often, so that's why we only have one to ten. Here we go into DVD box sets. Many of these are DVD and Blu-ray sets, or actually just Blu-ray sets that are DVD size, but a lot of them are DVD only as well. So we have Antique Bakery, the complete series, Big Wind Up, a box that I made that has both seasons in it, Chai Furu season one and two, The Eccentric Family season one, Monster, the complete series from Australia, Kino's Journey, Last Exile season one, Neon Genesis Evangelion and the movie collection that is obviously the original release from ADV or one of the releases from ADV. Then we have Monthly Girls Nozaki-kun, My Little Monster, Spice and Wolf, both seasons, Hell Girl, which is the box for season one singles but has the first three series seasons in there. We have The Rose of Versailles, the complete series in there as well, so a whole bunch of stuff. Um, the only one from the UK, I believe, is Nozaki-kun. Many of them are just the US releases with a couple of shown releases in there as well. Here we have more DVD sets with the, that first box is Mushishi, it's the limited edition for one of the singles from the Japanese release, but it actually has both DVD seasons in there, the first season from the US, the second from Australia. Next to that is another box that I made for Mononoke that has the Mononoke show as well as the Goblin Cat OVA from the Samurai Horror Tales series. Next to that is a fancy limited edition of Conqueror of Shambhala DVD release, obviously the film uh, sequel to the original Film Alchemist. I also have the Blu-ray of that, but that was just like a nice thing to have, a nice release I found locally. Then we have the original 1999 Hunter Hunter anime. Next to that is Tiger and Bunny, that's a Blu-ray set for those two. And then we have House of Five Leaves, as well as Welcome to Erebu's Office, Holic. The Holic film and the Subasa film, Allison and Lilia, Quasi in a Foreign Labyrinth, Fantastic Children, the complete series reduced to one case, Ghost Hunt, Ghost Stories, which again is reduced into one case, both seasons of Honey and Clover, Lovely Complex, Night Raid 1931, Paranoia Agent, Planetas, Ristorante Paradiso, and the Yu Yu Hakusho movie in various OVAs, as well as the Ranma limited edition Blu-ray releases for that, both the show and then the movie in OVAs. On this shelf we have Natsume's Book of Friends volumes 1 to 22. This is a still ongoing series, one of my favorites. I've talked about it so much already in this video, um, but I'm completely up to date with the English releases of that. I also have Nyanko Sensei piece of artwork there, as well as the Kitsune 1 7th scale, a beloved character from the anime series. Then next to that I also have volumes 1 to 12 of Horamiya, which is a fun romantic uh, like rom-com, high school series. Really nice if you enjoy those types of series. This shelf we also have a lot of display here with Hozuki from Hozuki's Cool Headedness, the, his 1 8th scale. We have a fan, we have a photo I took at um, Fushimi Inari of all of the tori there, and then also just like an older 
pot that one of my relatives bought in Japan. Uh, but we also have a bunch of one shots here. We have Sakuran, The Voices of a Distant Star, the Tokyo Pop release of that. We have Songs to Make You Smile, Calling You, the two Sailor Moon short story collections, Blue Spring, The God's Lie, Dream Fossil, Love Song, Four Shoujo Stories, AA Prime, An in Invitation from a Crab, Maiden Railways, um, Works, Iceland and Dolis, The Ice Wanderer and other stories, Abandon the Old in Tokyo, Goodbye and The Pushman, all three of those are done by Yoshihiro Tatsumi, Onward Towards Our Noble Deaths by Shigeru Mizuki, and then Japan, which is an anthology from Japanese and French comics creators. Really interesting one. They also have a Korean version of that as well from Korean artists and about Korea. But yeah, this mainly these center ones I like to have for display, and usually I do have just shorter or single volume series just to break up the collection a little bit. On the next shelf is a couple of completed series with 1 to 19 of Banana Fish, 1 to 14 of Nobari no O, and number 1 to 14 of Kiss Him no Not Me. Oh yeah, again, I've spoken about Banana Fish. It's a 80s shoujo about New York gang war <laughs> and government corruption and a lot of very dark themes. Nobari no O it parades itself as a ninja series, but is really more about identity and um, responsibility and finding your place and this idea of uh, purpose and almost soulmates and things like that as well. There's so many good things about it. I love Kamatani's manga. And then next to that we also have Kiss Him Not Me which is a, another romantic comedy high school series. Very funny, plays up a lot of the Fujoshi tropes and things like that so it's very smartly done Junko knows her audience and knows who she's directing this to and I really love it because it has a satisfying conclusion for me because the best boy wins on the shelf we have a couple ongoing series 1 to 20 of Kaza Hikaru 27 is coming out later this year and then we have 1 to 13 of Yotsuba the 14th volume which just recently was released. I still need to read some of these books so I do want to wait before I pick up any more but they are both very slow to update so I'm not really in a huge rush to get any more or to finish them quickly. I also have this postcard of Chahaya from Chahai Furu, one of my favorite manga, but one that unfortunately does not have a print release as of yet, but it is very beautiful and I love it. On the shelf are most of my shorter trim size books, many from Vertical or from Seven Seas. So we have the entirety of Mysterious Girlfriend X 1 to 6 in 2 and 1 omnibuses. We have the singular volume of Goodbye Geist, as well as 1 to 12 of Devil's Line. Those are both by the same mangaka, Ryo Hanada. Then we have the three omnibus of Whispered Words by Takashi Ikeda. We have 1 to 6 of The Girl from the Other Side, really really wonderful currently ongoing. We also have 1 and 2 of Versailles of the Dead by Kumiko Suikane of whom did After School Charisma I showed off in very early in this video. Uh, this next to that is Satoko Nara volume 1. I'm hoping to get volume 2 shortly. Then is the first volume of Our Dreams at Dusk Shimanami Tasogare. The other of Kantani's work that is available in English and I absolutely adore. And then we have volumes 1 and 2 of Mob Psycho 100 by 1. And I'm happy that Dark Horse seems to be putting out these books at a fairly okay pace. I do wish it was faster because it's always a toss up with Dark Horse manga but I hope we do see the end of it sooner rather than later and that it doesn't go on hiatus and then just stop being printed because of bad sales. Lastly for this bookcase we have 1 to 3 of Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon, the Eternal Editions, which are the Kanzenban releases put out by Kodansha. We have the first Showa A History of Japan, collecting the years of 1926 to 1939 by Shigeru Mizuki. We have 1, 2, 4, and 6 of Sunny by Taiyo Matsumoto, hoping to get the rest of that sooner rather than later, as well as the first 20th Century Boys Omnibus. I still need to read that, it's just really fallen down the list of priorities of things to read with so many new books coming in always. Then I also have the Pandora box 
box set, obviously the entirety of Pandora Hearts, really beautiful release, phenomenal. I have the Blanc et Noir uh, Obata Takeshi art book, as well as the Chahaya Furu art book or artwork illustration collection, and the Ultimate Edition box for Wolf's Rain, put out by Anime Limited. Those are just some odd sized things that fit in that area pretty well, so that's where they go. On the top of this shelf we have the two Sailor Moon original box sets put out by Kodansha. Those are my sisters, so that's her set. If you aren't wanting to shell out for the Eternal Editions but you are a fan of Sailor Moon, that's a great way to buy it and obviously the box sets have very nice artwork and look very good together. We also have the Sai art book which is Obata's Hikoro no Go artwork and personally my favourite of the manga that he's worked on. And then we also have the manga box set for Oran High School Host Club, the only one of Viz's art or box sets that I've actually purchased, one of if not the only one. Um, Oran is somewhat of its time but I think it does a lot of good things and it still holds up fairly well. It has a lot of interesting and fun characters and for what it is it's as I said very of its time but it definitely plays around with a lot of the tropes and it was very clever for when it was coming out. Nowadays a little less so because we as shoujo fans and as the market have evolved a little bit and have played around with it enough and a lot of people don't necessarily find those tropes all that endearing anymore but for when it came out, for what it's done and for how beloved it is, Oran is still well worth the read and I still enjoy it for what it is. The first shelf is a bunch of ongoing manga. We have 1 to 6 of Delicious and Dungeon, a fantasy food manga. So funny, really really good. Next to that is Two Year Eternity 1 to 9 by Yoshitoka Oima of A Silent Voice fame. Really, as you expect from Oima, heartbreaking, dramatic, wonderful. Next to that is Silver Spoon, Haruma Arakawa's ongoing agricultural slice of life comedy, which is so wonderful and personally, in my opinion, probably her magnum opus comparatively to Full Metal Alchemist. And next to that is 1 to 22 of Doro Hedoro. We have one more volume of this to come out and I am looking forward to it because I really like this series. It is hyper violent and hyper off the wall, crazy, pulpy, full of action, full of blood and guts but full of heart as well. So if that sounds like your thing, definitely check out Dora Hidoro. On this next shelf, apologies for some of the glare here, but we have 1 to 27 of Black Butler by Yana Toboso. This one has a bad rap, I think mainly because of the fans and the fan base, but it is quite an interesting dark Victorian era, so very gothic. Um, mystery with a supernatural element. It does have comedy which I find is a little bit unbalanced with a lot of the rest of the series but I think it's really clever. I think it's very well done and is definitely worth a look if you like that type of thing. Demons and Victorian era setting in England. It's, it's good. It's well worth a read. Next to that we have one to three of Orasama Teacher which is um, by Izumi Subaki as well as Nozaki Kun or Monthly Girls Nozaki Kun 1 to 10. Both of them are comedies. One of them is more so a four panel series, that being Nozaki Kun, the other one is just a more normal manga. I'm not sure if I'm going to continue with Orasama Teacher. It is funny, but it's not like super duper funny, whereas Nozaki Kun plays a not like it's really legitimately funny and I laugh at every single <laughs> volume and I fall in, lo in love with the characters. They're all so wonderful. Uh, next to that is The Case Study of Vanitas 1 to 5 done by Jun Mochizuki of Pandora Hearts fame. Really wonderful steampunk set in France, uh, again sort of Victorian era-esque, and vampires. If that doesn't sound like your thing then I don't know what's wrong with you because that is amazing and is definitely right up my alley. We also have volume one of Snow Eye with the Red Hair, a new debut from Viz. Really, really, really excited. Love the series, love the anime, so really happy to have the manga. We also have a non-android here of Toko from Book Girl. She's the titular Book Girl. And yeah, I love her. It's not every day you get light novel protagonists as androids. She is very wonderful and I love her novel series. On this shelf we have 1 to 35 of Hunter x Hunter. I make no secret about my love for Yoshihiro Togashi's works and personally Hunter x Hunter is my favourite 
I just love all the characters and I think the writing is so wonderful. I think it's a really interesting mix of all sorts of things and is done just with so much creativity and just with so much uh, thought put into it and even though people complain about the art I personally don't have an issue with it. I really think that Togashi's manga is beyond a lot of what is available in Shonen Jump and I hope that I can read the next couple of volumes because we do have at least one coming out. Um, it is on hiatus again as always but uh, whenever he's able to update it and hopefully we'll see a conclusion sometime in the next 10 years, um, I do hope that it'll be as satisfying as the rest of the series has been so far. And I do as well have Gone and Killua, the, two of the main characters of the series. I love them so much. And actually, I believe Killua was the very first figure I ever bought, so that's a cool thing. On this shelf we have some more display stuff, but we also have a bunch of Yuri with the five volumes of Kasei-san and that have been released so far. We have the two bilingual editions of Chihaya Furu, which again, I would love to have in print, guys, Kadansha, please. Uh, next to that is the three volumes of After Hours and then the six volumes of Bloom Into You, which have been released so far. In the middle here we have an interesting character um, figure. This is technically a Vocaloid from China. I believe her name is Luna and I don't know anything about her but I love her design. It's exactly my aesthetic so I had to pick her up. And then next to that we have some very old shoujo. We have Bride of Deimos 1-7 to which is all that has been released in English or was released in English. We have 1-3 to of Totera and then we also have Andromeda Stories 1-3, to both by Keiko Takamiya. Um, I believe Andromeda was written by someone else, though, where Takamiya wrote and illustrated to Tara. On this shelf, we have a bunch of really great series, really great ongoing series. We have Yona of the Dawn 1-18. to If you're not reading Yona, check it out, guys. It is so, so good. Then next to that is The Key to the Kingdom. I still need to get volume 6 of that and then it'll be complete, so I only have 1 to 5 currently. Requiem of the Rose King is one of my absolute favorite ongoing manga currently. It's dark and dramatic and Shakespearean, volumes 1 to 10. We have no Go with the Clouds, North by Northwest, a really interesting low fantasy piece by Aki Ire set in Iceland. Then we have My Boy, 1 to 4, which could be seen as fairly controversial but for what it is I enjoy it so far and I really like the relationship, the platonic relationship between our two main characters. After that is After the Rain 1 and 2. I still need to get the rest of these omnibuses. They are really lovely. I just haven't had the time and there's been other books for me to buy and to read. And then next to that is the entire series of Moteki and two Onibasa's Love Strikes. Um, I really love Mitsuro Kubo. I th really think her work is very criminally underrated, but, but Moteki is very hard to recommend because it's not very likable. The main character isn't very likable, and I think that makes it harder for people to engage with the story. I think it is done purposefully, but it's not necessarily something that people want to read. Um, I also think that there was maybe a bit too much editing or editor um, interference in the series, so I don't think it ended the way she wanted to, but I still enjoy it for what it is. But again, hard to recommend and not for everyone compared to her other series, which is very, very good and I will show you later. On this shelf we have the entire series of Astro Lost in Space, five volumes. It has a anime coming up for this current season. Really excited for it. I read it on Shonen Jump and absolutely fell in love. Didn't expect to and it really surprised me and was happy to pick up the books after that. Next is volumes one and two of that Blue Sky Feeling. There's only three volumes in this series so if you are interested it is a short one but interesting coming of age story with a sort of love story between two friends at school. And then next to that is Dawn of the Arcana 1 to 4 that's a 13 volume series I have read and hope to collect all of because it is very good and definitely uh, was better than I expected so I hope to get the rest of that. 
pick that one up or try it if you enjoy Yona of the Dawn or even Twelve Kingdoms. They're similar, not exactly the same, but very, very, very reminiscent of each other. In the middle, we have Yato, the stray god of Noragami, and he is stationed right next to his manga series, which is 1 to 20 plus the stray stories uh, spin off book. I love Noragami. If you're a shonen fan, if you like supernatural elements, you should definitely be picking up Noragami. Not as popular as it used to be, but um, definitely very, very consistently good. On this shelf we have some larger trim size stuff, most of which are ongoing. We have 1 to 9 of Welcome to the Ballroom, a ballroom dancing shonen manga. Next to that is 1 to 8 of Land of the Lustrous, again one of my favourites coming out, a phenomenal series. 1 to 8 of Gangsta, and then the completed 1 to 5 of Gangsta Curse, which is a spin-off series of Gangsta, obviously. Next to that is 1 to 6 of Tokyo Tarareba Girls. And then 1 to 8 of, again, by Mitsuro Kubo. Yeah, if you are wanting to read a Kubo work, again, is definitely the one to choose. It is so good. Time travel, second chances, sort of a romantic comedy, but definitely a comedy. It's just wonderful. On this bottom shelf, we have 1 to 31 of Haikyuu. Absolutely one of my favorite sports series. Definitely one of my favorite jump series. Really, really wonderful volleyball manga. And we also have some more illustrated portraits from conventions. But yeah, if you're... I mean, Haikyuu is wonderful. I don't really need to encourage people to try it. But I am hoping... I was only going to stop at 30 and then wait for more volumes to come out and buying them all at once than getting it month to month. But 31 was really, really cheap, so I picked it up. But it is, like with My Hair Academia, sort of very low priority because I am reading it via Shonen Jump and so I don't need to be buying the new book as soon as it comes out like it seems with a lot of my other books that I do buy. Here we're at my much smaller <laughs> bookcase. At the top we have 1 to 12 of Vagabond. Number 6 is missing mainly because a friend is borrowing it but I do own the entirety of these Viz Big editions. Uh, this is the only one of Inoue's manga that I own currently. I do hope to read more of his stuff though in the future. On the next shelf we have 1 to 12 of Yen Press's Fruits Basket editions. They are beautiful releases. We also have Fruits Basket Another, the volume one, the spin-off of Fruits Basket or the sequel to the main story, as well as 1 to 5 of Children of the Sea. On this shelf is a lot of my Kaoru Mori or hardcover editions. We have Kaoru Mori Anything and Something, which is a bunch of one-shots, as well as 1 to 5 of the Emma Omnibuses. Amazing series, wonderful, beautiful. We also have Gogo -Go Monster by Tayo Matsumoto, Utsubora, a, the story of a novelist by Asumiku Nakamura, and My Brother's Husband, volumes 1 and 2 by Gengoro Tagame. We also have the single volume of Shirley, that is Kaoru Mori's first series that was released that CMX put out. I also have the one seventh scale of Emma from Emma and she is beautiful and it's not again every day you get figures for manga like Emma so I definitely had to pick her up especially because I love Kaoru Mori's work so so much. On this shelf we have Princess Jellyfish volumes 1 to 9, one of my favourite series, as well as Descending Stories 1 to 10 and House of Five Leaves 1 to 8. This whole bookcase is definitely like some of my all-time favourite series and yeah, any of these I highly, highly recommend. Uh, Descending Stories is phenomenal, Princess Jellyfish is fantastic and House of Five Leaves is criminally underrated. On this shelf we have another figure from Natsume's Book of Friends, this time with Natsume himself. We have 1 to 4 of Sweet Blue Flowers, we have 1 to 8 of Pluto, the Planetess, two omnibuses, In This Corner of the World omnibus, Not Simple by Natsume Ono, and then Solonin and the Epilogue, you can't really see, it's a little bit dark there. Uh, but yeah, all really great, solid series. Um, and Solonin is definitely the starting point for if you want to get into Inyo's work. It's a lot easier to approach than some of his other stuff. On this shelf I have a lot of hardback and like oversized books, so many of them are from Fantagraphics. We have 1 to 3 of Therme Romae, which is by Yen Press. We have the Tekong King Crete Black and White Omnibus 
We have Drunken Dream and other stories by Moto Hagio, as well as Hagio's Other World Barbara and The Heart of Thomas, all four of which are released by Fantagraphics. We have another Fantagraphics release with Nijigahara Holograph, another Asano work, and then we have the beautiful release of A Distant Neighborhood by Panant Mon. This is the Jiratan Gucci Seinen. Um, again, about time travel and sort of second chances and that sort of thing. Reminiscence. And 1 to 8 of Wandering Sun. All of what that we got in this series, but I treasure it nonetheless. Here we have a good mix of my art books. Many of these I've done art book overviews, just some of the more recent ones that I've gotten like Altera Battle of Records and Twelve Kingdoms, but also Soul Eater and Jiro Tanaguchi and Mushishi and the Pandora Hearts stuff, Full Metal Alchemist, uh, Land of the Lustrous. I have a lot of different things here and I love them all dearly. I don't really get art books all that often anymore, but if you watch my last pickups video, I did pick up like four or five of them. So that was exciting for me, but I adore getting art books for some of my favorite artists and these ones are beautifully done, really, really lovely. Those who regularly watch my videos will uh, recognize this area is where I film. I've got a window right here, so really good for natural light. I have my little Pitchet Nendroid up here because I love him. He's one of my favorite Euro Nice characters. I also have more Ava's Demon artwork right there. And below, as you can see, there's a whole bunch of art books. It's a little bit dark, so um, apologies for that, but I'm going to get into that right now. I have the flash on, so it looks kind of gross. Apologies. But here we have a whole bunch more art books. Some of these are the English editions, things like um, the Decoy Man release and Guardians of the Louvre and Inoue Means Gaudi and the Fullmetal Alchemist book. But a lot of these are also just normal um, releases, normal art book releases, all sorts of things. A lot of them are series that are less or just don't fit over there, um, different trim size. Um, main thing in this part is this Guardians of the Louvre release, it's a Jiro Tanaguchi manga similar to um, Rohan at the Louvre. I also have this Time of Eve fan book which is from the Kickstarter. This Ultimate Edition art book is obviously from the UK Ultimate Edition. I have the First of Bubbles fanzine. I have a couple um, books that are actually doujin. Uh, this is from the US Darker Than Black Blu-ray release. Um, a lot of these are from Kickstarters and things. There are some also movie pamphlets in here as well, uh, poster books, things like that, a little less serious. Um, this one's a fan book as well, as is this one for Lovely Complex. And in this corner here with all the files, those are actually clear files where I keep those. And they have a whole bunch of different series there, generally free or um, Hunter Hunter I have quite a few of and Natsume, all sorts of series. So yes, this is where I keep sort of my mixed odds and ends, but actual art books I have. Um, like Shooting Star Bebop and Carnival. This is the illustrator for the Durarra novels. Arias is Beautiful by Reiko Shimizu. I also have um, Angel Eyes, which is the Banana Fish art book. And I showed this off in my last pickups video. This is a Asamiku Nakamura Collected Works book. This is for Kimini Toroke. This is for Tekong Kingcrete. This is for... Um, 10 count and the other works that this mangaka puts out not a fan of 10 count but she is a very talented artist this is for Kino's Journey and this is for House of Five Leaves and this is for Koyonada and her stuff man there's a lot of BL in this uh this part this also has some here like this was an extra with one of the devil line um, manga in Japan. This is a Kaoru Mori little extra from a magazine. So yeah, lots of little different extras. This is the Tokyo Ghoul Japanese book. This is Haikyuu. There's a lot of, there's a lot of d weird odds and ends down here. On this shelf we have the last of my quote-unquote normal manga with Plus Anima. That's a fun little fantasy series that if you can track it down, give it a read. It's not anything fabulous, but I 
I do think that more people would enjoy it if they gave it the chance. And then we also have Ghost Hunt 1 to 11, which is all that was ever released in English. It only had one more volume, but then Del Rey became Kodansha, and we just never saw volume 12. It's very sad. Uh, but that is a paranormal mystery series with a twist. It The novels are written by Fuyumi Ono, so of 12 Kingdoms and Shiki fame. She is very good at what she does. I really like her horror and her paranormal stuff, and I like her isekai stuff, so I just like everything she does. Um, but yeah, that also has an anime adaptation as well, but again, unfinished. Why, why is this series never finished? I just cry to myself, but it is really good, although very, very out of print from what I understand. So up the top here I have a bunch of Spice and Wolf novels, 1 to 20, that's all that has been released so far. 1 to 17 is the main story, the original story, and then 18 to 20 are newer additions to the story, um, set quite a few years after the end of the main series. Then we have 1 to 3 of Wolf and Parchment, New Theory, Spice and Wolf, which is a spin-off about a particular character and another character who does show up in the original novels. And I enjoy it, but at the same time I'm sort of wary about it. So it's not for everyone, I wouldn't, um, you know, recommend it blindly, but if you are a super huge fan of Spice and Wolf, maybe check it out. More Haikyuu with Hinata and Kageyama. These are, again, prize figures. They're a lot larger than um, most prize figures, but they're really, really high quality. I really enjoy them. Apologies for the shaking. I'm on a little bit of a <laughs> precarious point here. But yeah, really, really nice for the money. They are very cheap prize figures and look fantastic. Here we have some more prize figures. These are the two managers from Haikyuu. I love them both. They are wonderful. And you don't often get figures of the female manager characters in a Shonen sports series. So that was good. Had to pick them up. And they look cute together. Here we have a couple of... Uh, light novels that I have, some very old Viz light novels with the Full Male Alchemist um, 1 to 5 Under the Faraway Sky and The Ties That Bind. Most people will probably know The Ties That Bind that, because that is actually included in the box set that um, Mon Viz has for the manga. I also have the first and only Kino's Journey or Kino no Tabi light novel that Tokyo Pop released once upon a time. Right here is my Spice and Wolf spot. I have the collector's edition of the light novels in the larger leather bound book. And then I also have this holo figurine. There are a lot of holo figurines out there, but I really like this one because it captures the um, personality of the character. And although she is nude, that's fairly typical for holo, so not really an issue there. <laughs> Here we have one of the few uh, Love Live figures that I still have around. This is Kotori. It's a 1 7th scale. I really like the designs of these figures, but I have only kept the ones that I really, really love. And Kotori is just a, such a sweetheart. I don't even really like the series that much, but she's so sweet and wonderful. So, And I really like her design. It's very cute. Here we have some more of my light novels with the first volume of Le Record of Lotos War. We have The Dark Maidens. Neither of those are technically light novels. Um, but yeah, they still sort of count. We have the first volume of The Empty Box and Zeroth Maria. We have The Devil is a Part-Timer, Volume 1. Time of Eve, Another Act, which is obviously a spin-off of Time of Eve. And then we also have Your Name and Your Name, Another Side, Earthbound. Novelizations of the film and then obviously additions to the film from other characters' perspectives. I really like that novel too. On this shelf we have both of Ryogo Narita's um, light novel series, so his most popular ones, Bakuno and Dorara. I have 1 to 9 of Dorara and then 1 to 10 of Bakuno. Bakuno is my favourite out of the two, but Dorara is pretty solid too as well. Here we have some more light novels with Kieli 1 to 9, that's the complete series. Uh, Haruhi Suzumiya 1 to 10, the complete series so far. Masquerade and the Nameless Woman, which is the same uh, writer as Zero, the Empty Box and Zeroth Maria. We also have Volume 1 of Legend of the Galactic Heroes, Volume 1 of Pandora Hearts, Caucus Race, and 1 to 8 of Book Girl. That's the complete series. And we have some uh, fan art, you're a nice standees as well there, um, because I'm a big dork. But yeah, all fairly good. My favorite is definitely Book Girl and Kiali out of all of these. Pandora Hearts is interesting if you enjoy the series already. Two. 
here I have some BL uh, Future Lovers 1 and 2, Gerard and Jacques 1 and 2, Truly Kindly and Lovers in the Night, Nights, Twittering Birds Never Fly 1 to 3, No Touching at All, Even So I Will Love You Tenderly, all of, from Nights to Even So are all by Ko Yonada, love her work, wish we had more of it available or readily available. Seven Days, um, the two volumes of that, that is getting an omnibus re-release from Sublime. Mr. Minimart by Junko, as well as Return of the Prince, also by Junko. Only Series About You, Volumes 1 and 2. Classmates, or Dokyosei, Volume 1. Again, love it. Everyone should read that one, even if you're not really a fan of BL. We also have a new season of Young Leaves by the uh, venue Tachibana also did Seven Days, so that's why I picked that one up. We have two SDM volumes with Age Cold Blue and Tableau Numero 20. We have Apple and Honey in the sequel as well. We have the three volumes of Escape Journey, which is good. I liked it overall for what it was. Then we have I Hear the Sunspot, uh, the first one, Theory of Happiness, and then Volume 1 of Limit. All fantastic. I love I Hear the Sunspot. Then we have Wolf Magic, Jackass, and the two volumes of Prince Bari. Go For It Nakamura, Total Eclipse of the Eternal Heart. Both of those are done by the same mangaka, but totally different, and I would not necessarily inherently recommend one if you enjoyed the other. We have The Man of Tango, which is problematic, but still fairly okay, mainly because of the epilogue. I enjoyed it mainly because of the epilogue. Uh, Sleeping Moon, Volumes 1 and 2, and then Star Collector, Volume 1. This shelf we have 1 to 5 of Border by Kazuma Koraka. I wish that, again, it had a more reliable release. I don't know how many volumes. I think the sixth volume is out in Japan. It's not really um, actively being published, but at the same time, I in, can never tell if the June releases. Does the flower blossom? I want this to finish so much, but again, sort of a hopeless case with June. Then we have 1 to 12 of The World's Greatest First Love. Not a good series, but one I have a guilty pleasure for. Next to that is Blue Morning 1 to 7, and then Let Die Volumes 1 and 2. I'm still on the fence with Let Die. I don't know whether I want to keep collecting it or not, but it's okay for what it is. Blue Morning is phenomenal, though. Highly recommended, especially if you like historical romance. Here we have some of my larger trim uh, BL manga. We have 1 to 4 of Intense, which is a manhwa, as is Dream of the Days, both by Kyung Ha Yi. We have You and Me, etc. by Kyugo. New Beginnings by Ketsuko Yamamoto. I wish we, wish we had more of her manga. It would be great. I like a lot of her stuff. Not Enough Time by Shoko Hiraka. And then a lot of Fumi Yoshinaga manga with The Moon and Sandals, as well as Don't Say Anymore Darling and Solfege. 1 to 3 of Ten Dance. Monster and the Beast, as well as Ichigenmai, the first class is Civil Law, again by Yoshinaga. I enjoy all of these. Um, Solfege is probably my least favorite because I don't like uh, teacher-student relationships, but everything else is good. I like them a lot. Uh, Monster and the Beast is also new, so I talk a little bit about it in my new pickups video, so check it out. So that's my entire collection. Lighting got terrible at the end because it is winter time and all of my lighting, the natural lighting, disappears very, very quickly. So apologies for that. But I hope you guys enjoyed. That is everything that I own in regards to anime, manga, light novels, figures that is related to this collection. And many of you guys have been following me for a long time. If you have not yet subscribed, I do do pick up videos twice a month. I also do art book overviews. I tend to do first impressions videos as well as uh, recommendations videos as well. So if any of that sounds interesting, please subscribe. I really appreciate it. In addition to that, I also have both a Twitter and a newly minted Instagram that you can follow. I'm on social media fairly regularly, so you can always contact me there. But let me know your thoughts and feelings in the comments below. I love reading long comments, so don't feel shy about posting a wall of text. I adore that type of thing. Uh, but otherwise, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I am Simply G, and I'll catch you in the next video.